grace, power, ministry, and love. Incline your ears to wisdom and your hearts to understanding. Receive the word of God according to knowledge. Welcome to preach. To preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Join Minister Chantrell for today's message. Good day, good day, good day, beloved. This is Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo, and I'm Minister Chantrell Davis. Today is September the 30th of 2016, and it is 1032 a.m. Central Standard Time, and I am going to begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that I'm alive for such a time as this. I thank you, Lord, that you saw fit to wake me this morning. I thank you for your grace that is sufficient this day, your mercies that are new this day. I thank you for your benefits that I am daily loaded with, Father. You are worthy. You are so worthy of praise. Thank you, Lord, for being enduringly strong. Thank you, Lord, for being entirely sincere. Thank you, Lord, for being eternally steadfast. Thank you, Lord, for being impartially merciful. Thank you, Lord, for being lovingly purposeful. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness that is limitless. Thank you that you are impurely powerful. Thank you, Father, for your sufficient grace. Thank you, Father God, for your righteous reign. Thank you, Father God, for being a pathway to peace. Thank you, Father, that you are the wellspring of wisdom. Thank you, Father God, that you are faithful and you are just. Thank you that you are ever watchful. Thank you that you are holy. You are exalted. Be exalted, Lord. Thank you for your supply that is inexhaustible. Thank you for your love that is limitless. Thank you that you strengthen and you sustain. You guard and you guide. You are so worthy, Lord. Be lifted higher. Be exalted, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we bring you glory, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray as I minister this word today, Father. I pray for your wisdom, your wisdom that is pure, that is peaceable, that is gentle, that is easy to entreat, that is full of mercy, full of good fruit, and without partiality and without hypocrisy, Father. I need your wisdom. I yield to your wisdom this day, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray that my speech will be seasoned with grace, Father, that it is it is fitted for the season and the situation and this day, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God. I pray for every person that is listening, Father, every person under the sound of my voice, Father. I speak cultivated hearts and ears. I speak softened hearts and ears, Father, in receptivity, Father. I decree in the name of Jesus this word will go forth unhindered and unchecked by any demonic force, Father, in the name of Jesus. I bind the tools of the enemies and the host of the enemy, Father, in the name of Jesus. I decree that it is done according to thy word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I minister praying that all who will hear will be able to add to their faith virtue and to add to their virtue knowledge and then temperance father then to add to their temperance patience and then patience they'll be able to add godliness and with godliness brotherly love and with brotherly love charity father your love for without it nothing works but it is the bond that holds all things together God you are so good I bless you you are worthy I thank you father God for your grace that is sufficient and I yield my mouth I plead the blood over my heart mind will and emotion and I thank you that my speech will move forth according to thy word your will this day. In the name of Jesus, be exalted. We glorify you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining me today, beloved. Um, today's message, um, uh, he gives them to me as he always does. Usually I'm in a place of prayer or even working out. And I'm, I've learned that a place that you spend a lot of time with the Lord becomes an open heaven. If, wherever you pray a lot, T- tends to be a portal, a open heaven, because a lot of the messages I can get right in the middle of a workout is really amazing. Um, what he gave me this particular message, and this message today is called "Lengthen Your Stride," and it is time and chance. And I consider the time, the season of the Lord, the chances, the happenings of the Lord. And he says, "Don't miss it." I'm going to start with Ecclesiastes 9:11. I returned and saw unto the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. And this the Lord put on my heart because your stride, a lot of our strides will have to change. You have to hasten your stride. And this is all under the direction of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit tells you when to stand still, when to quicken your pace, when to slow your pace. Because sometimes that standing still is going to be to the very saving of your life in these days. Each person is naturally built with a different stride in the natural. And the Lord said, so it is in the spirit. I'm going to give an example that he gave me because this is how he gave it to me as I was walking. Say, for instance, you have a man that is six foot tall, 
a man that is five foot six, a man that is probably four eleven, a man that's seven foot tall, and they're all tall to walk at the same rhythm. <laughs> One man's legs may be three feet long. One man's leg may be two feet long. One man, you know, you know where I'm going. And if they all have the strange, same pace and stride, will they reach the same destination at the same time? <laughs> the answer is no. Our stride is different. Each man's stride is different. And what the Lord has helped me to understand, I, I'm not going to get a hell to myself. I'm going to go continue to the truth that the Holy Spirit is the one who directs your stride. Each one of us have a different stride based on the season that we're in, based on the call up on our life. And, and I'm, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. If people are getting distracted looking at another man's stride. They're trying to keep up with another man's stride, another man's season. The Holy Spirit is your compass. He is the director of your stride. The Holy Spirit has been sent here to lead God and to help us. All gifts are from him. All correction is from him. All direction is from him. Everything we get is by and through the Holy Spirit and the, of promise. The, we, the, you, this Christian walk, you cannot walk without him. This is a season of time and chance. And it will be based on your stride. And your stride is only directed by the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible tells us the steps of a good man are ordered. Our path is ordered. We don't go our own way. I see people, and I'm, I'm going to stay on point here because I want to get this done. You know, stay on point where I see people. If some people want to um, call for a fast or call for whatever they're doing, the Lord said, is, not this, is this not the chance I've, the fast I've chosen? The Lord is supposed to choose your fast. Nobody else. You, the Lord chooses your fast. And it's effective to break the bonds. You know the scripture. I'm going to stay on course. I'm going to read Proverbs 4 and 12. When thou goest, thy steps shall not, be sta shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shall not stumble. I'm going to read it again in the good word version. God's word version. When you walk your stride, when you walk, your stride will not be hampered. Even if you run, even if you run, you will not stumble. Excuse me. And these are the grace notes that the Lord gave me. One man's person, one person's stride is according to the call of the Lord upon his life in the season that he's in. And this is key too. Many will lose their stride. This is, you're going to lose your pace. You're going to lose your footing. You're going to lose your pace and lose your footing by looking at someone else's season and their stride. Many are trying to keep up. The world calls it keeping up with the Joneses. Many are trying to keep up with the stride and the ministry of others. They're trying to keep up what they see others doing. They try to post what they see others post. They try to say the kind of things that others say. They try to speak the way that other people speak. They try to move in the capacity somebody else moves in. And the Bible tells us to be healthy with the portion, with the portion he gave you. Each part of the body has been fitly joined together to do what it is intended to do. The foot can't do what the liver does. The arm can't do what the eye does. We are looking, and, and this is happening. This is why he's giving me this. People are looking at other people's stride, other people's ministry, and they're pacing in their selves and their words off of other person's stride rather than revelation and direction from the Holy Spirit and footing and striding and movement from the Holy Spirit. They're pacing it up on what other people are doing. They're looking at other people's ministry and moving forth in the things they do. They're looking at other people's stride and they're hastening their step after that stride rather than the guidance of the Holy Spirit for their season and their time and many are going to miss some things and I promise you when you miss these things you may fall behind you have got to, these time and chances that are coming up, these destiny connections, the, it's about who you know who you, it's about who you are and who you know, he's going to put you with right connections by keeping your stride and he said many will lose their stride, which means you will lose your placing while you're looking at the strides of others and he said, many, many are trying to move with the stride of another person's season and not their own. And this is error. This will cause a problem. And I'm going to get to why he is saying it's important. You have to stay with the stride he gave you because it will lead to your time, which is his season, your chance, which is his happenings for your life and your path. The Holy Spirit is your compass and the director of your stride. Hebrews 3, and 7, uh, uh, th Hebrews 3, 7 through 10. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today, if you hear my voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation, in the day of temptation uh, uh, in the wilderness. We know what that's speaking about the children of Israel. I'm going to read this Hebrews in the God's word version. As the Holy Spirit says, if you hear God speak today, don't be stubborn. Don't be stubborn like those who rebelled and tested me in the desert. He, there's some stubborn people. He's saying this because some of y'all have heard from him and you're stubborn. You're challenging it or you're not moving. 
Partial obedience is disobedience. Slow to obey is a problem too. You have to obey when he tells you to move. I promise y'all, <laughs> and anybody that has heard this testimony that I do have on my channel, when I was speaking about this time, uh, when he had baptized me with these heavenly languages, that I know I was speaking at least seven. I, I don't think it. I know it. And this conversation went on, and I went for a period where I, almost two weeks, I struggled to speak English. Every time I opened my mouth, I flew into another language until I cried out to the Lord. And he revealed some things to me. And as he started revealing things to me, he was talking to me and I had to write pens and write because like I said, he told me I was a ready writer and I had to write down things he was saying and he was trying to tell me how important it was to move with the Holy Spirit. And I promise you, a lot of y'all would have him in a box and y'all would think the Lord wouldn't use words like this, but he will use what he needs to and he will speak whatever language he has to. And, and, and it's nothing that's going to be contrary to him. But he was trying to help me to understand how important it was to move with the Holy Spirit and only as the Holy Spirit moved. Because right in the middle of the sentence, as he was talking, he stopped and said, when I move, you move just like that. And from those of y'all that have been anywhere in the hip hop or R&B, y'all know that's a song. When I move, you move just like that. And I start laughing and he let me know he heard it because the very next day he had a pastor's wife say it over the phone to me again. And, and there was no chance of that being a coincidence. You heard what you heard what you heard. Yeah, you heard me. When I move, you move. Just like that. It's just that simple. You move when he says move. You speak when he says speak. You stop when he says stop. When he says be still, you be still. But a lot of us won't be still because we see other people. There's plenty of people that are being busy, but they're not fruitful. I'm going to say that again. There's a lot of busy people, but it's not fruitful. You're going to do a lot of things he did not tell you to do. And all the books you may have when you stand before him would be burnt up. Because the why behind doing it matters. Why are you doing what you're doing? If he didn't tell you to do it, it's dead. And I mean tell you to do it. He didn't tell you to say it, do it, or minister it. It's dead. If he didn't tell you to do anything, it's dead. You can't do it for any other reason but for the fact he told you to do it. I'm going to read Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind me and reach forth unto those things which are before me. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. He said he pressed toward the mark. And Philippians, I'm going to read this in the God's Word version. Brothers and sisters, I can't consider myself a winner yet. And y'all better see this too. This is Paul. I can't consider myself a winner yet. You can't consider yourself a winner yet. This is what I do. I don't look back. We ain't looking back. I lengthen my stride. These are the key words. Lengthen my stride. And I run straight toward the goal to win the prize that God heavenly, God's heavenly call offers in Christ. God's heavenly cause offers in Christ. You lift in your stride. Because I know if y'all understand, everybody like to quote Paul saying, I have finished my course. You know, right when he said the Lord showed his departure, his time of his departure was at hand. He said he has finished his course. He kept the faith. You notice he said he finished his course. He didn't say he finished the race. He finished his course because God having something more perfect that they without us would not be made perfect. He handed the baton off to somebody. He finished his course. This is a relay race. The race ain't over and the race will not be over to the kingdom of God when the time of the Gentiles and grace is over at the end. We all run a race and we hand this baton off. Should we, you know, should we not be one of them that lives until the Jesus comes back? He said, I kept my course. He didn't say he finished the race. The race is finished with us. Or whomever's going to be taken all the way in through the finish line. He finished the course set for his life. You are set to finish your course. And God will and only he knows if the race will end within our lifetime. God knoweth. He finished his course. And we have to keep our, lengthen our stride to finish ours and stop looking at the stride of our fellow brothers. And, when the, and I know the Lord people, because I'm thanking for this scripture, because this is somebody, this is something somebody's going to try to use. And I know this is why the Holy Spirit is giving me this right now. Where it says to each of us, each one of us to look on the things of other. He means you pray. You look out for other people to be concerned, to make sure they're okay, to make sure they don't fall behind, to keep them encouraged, to spur them on. That does not mean comparing yourself with their stride. You look on the things of other, make sure they're okay. Check on them. Build them up. Encourage them. Look on the things that's going on with them and help them. But do not compare your walk and your step and your stride and your ministry, your gifts and your talents and what he's called you to do with theirs. And don't pace it according to how they're moving. That's why I get here. He get on people that have a problem with the way somebody preach. Oh, that's kind of harsh. That's offensive. That's your problem. Some people are called to preach that way and they will not change because it's the call of God upon their life. It is rebuke, reproof, teaching and instruction for doctrine that the, that the body of Christ may be sound. 
And then you got the ones, their gift is nothing but merciful encouragement teaching. We can't teach one without the other. That's why we have a body. It has to all be taught. I'm going to read Proverbs, the same one I just read in good God's word version. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your sight be focused in front of you. Carefully walk a straight path and all your ways will be secure. Carefully walk a straight path and all your ways will be secure. Don't lean to the right or to the left. Walk away from evil. And I mean that's clear. Our Lord is good. This is very clear instruction. Very clear instruction. And I'm telling y'all, this time and chance, these steps you take, I promise you, are key. And this is why he's telling me there is key. It is key. Because your pace is going to be, your pace is going to get you to the right place and the right time to meet the right person for you. And if you move out of your pace because of someone else, you're going to miss specifically what he had for you because you're trying to keep up with somebody else. And they may be walking in the season he called them in, but you're going to miss something that's going to completely catapult you somewhere else. He gave me this time and chance for a thrusting forward. Many will fall off. And out, and they will miss their time. Like I said, that's the season of the Lord. And chance, which is the happenings of the Lord. To be at the right place at the right time to meet the right person who will take your hand in the spirit. And they will propel you and thrust you forward. He kept showing me this as I walked. And when I received this word, your time and chance is important because if you walk out of step trying to keep up with somebody else and compare to somebody else, you're going to miss who the Lord has for you to meet that's going to propel you forward because it's going to be about who he connect you with. He's going to set you before kings. It's about connection. If he said he's going to take you and set you before kings and high men, what do you think that is? That's right connection. That's right people. And when you're walking out of step, many are missing this, and therefore you will never reach where he was trying to get you in full capacity if you walk out of sync with the path that is ordered in the order steps of the Lord. The time and chance for you to meet. Then he said spiritually, they're going to take you in the hand and thrust you forward. And this, I promise you, physically when he said this, I kept seeing somebody being grabbed by the hand on the roller skates and thrust forward. And I, I couldn't remember what it was. I said, why am I seeing that? What was that? What was that? And I heard him as clear as I'm speaking. He said, roller derby. <laughs> And I said, oh, yeah. And that was the example he gave me. I kept seeing the people who are behind. They set you up. They grab you by the hand and they sling them forward and they fly past and everybody's knocked out of the way. That's the example he gave me. That imagery physically flashed before my eyes. And I couldn't recall what it was. And he said it. Roll the derby. This was this is what's going to happen. You're going to be led to the right place at the right time when you lengthen your stride according to him. You can't wait for nobody. When he says, go, you got to go. You can love your brothers and sisters in Christ and earthly family. But either they can come with you and the Lord may not want them to come with you. I love you. I pray for you. But I, your stride must go forth. And your length, your stride must be lengthened. This is a time of lengthened strides. So y'all walking at a snail pace. And it would be according to the Holy Spirit guiding you on the pace. But this is a time of lengthened strides. Everyone's stride need to be lengthened. But you need to hear the voice of the Lord. When he says stand still and know that I'm God, because it's going to be some warfare. It's like people running down the field in a football team. You ain't going to think the defensive line going to come at you. It's going to be a defensive line. But though they war against you, they will not prevail. For the Lord thy God is with thee. But you hearken unto his voice. Don't you move outside the voice of the Holy Spirit. And this is going to be the result of it. This end time army that is being raised up. These people that do know their God. I'm going to first read Joel 2, 6 to 8. Before, before their face, this is what's going to happen. This is the body. And you need to say this with your own name and your family. Before their face, the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone, his, uh, everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. No sword is going to wound you. That's how y'all have no idea. This is a literal thing, but I'm going to stay on course. I'm going to read that again in God's word version. People are terrified in their presence. People are going to be terrified. And we mean the wicked folks. They're going to be terrified because we, we are a light in our presence. Every face turns pale. 
They run like warriors. They climb walls like soldiers. They march straight ahead. They do not leave their places. They do not crowd one another. They keep in their own lines. Even when they break through the defenses, they do not break their ranks. Huh. Ranks will not be broken. This is an awesome thing. I'm going to read Daniel 11 and 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by the, flat, by the flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. I'm going to read that again in the God's Word version. With flattery, he will corrupt those who abandon the promise. There's going to be some flattery. We know what they're speaking of. But the people who know their God will be strong and take action. We will be strong and take action. A uh, strong and take action. Move in your portion and your season, not another. Move in your portion. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 and 11 through 11. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit word of wisdom, to another by a word of knowledge, by the same Spirit to, an to another faith, by the same Spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another, the workings of miracles to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits to another diverse kinds of tongues to another, the interpretation of tongues, but all these work at that one and the self same spirit. Amen. Dividing to every man severally as he will. And you know, I'm addressing this because it's something the Lord has put in my spirit about the baptism of the Holy spirit. When you're baptized in the Holy spirit, it is proof that the power has come upon you. That is not the same as the gift of tongues and diverse tongues. I know I have diverse tongues. The baptism of the Holy Spirit and then the gift of diverse tongues. People try to argue away people being baptized in the Holy Spirit when they're saved, saying that's a gift. No, it is a gift of the Holy Spirit, but it's evidence that he has come up on you, you speak in another language. But that is not as the same as this gifts of diverse tongues. This is something different. The, the, you speaking in tongues when the Holy Spirit come up on you is proof that he's come up on you. You are, you are under his lordship. Many, when you're saved, I, I, I've, I've said this before, it's like equating it to someone drinking a glass of water when they get saved, and when you baptize in the Holy Spirit, you're submerged in the pool because he has precedent over you. He is ruler over you. He has lordship over you, and there is a difference. Many can say they're saved, but not many have surrendered to his lordship. His lordship, that baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're under his rule. And I'm going to stop on that note. The encouraging scripture, because he is able to keep you from falling, you need to keep focused on him. Now to unto him that is able to keep you from falling. You keep your gaze on him. He's able to keep you from falling. He's able to support your steps. He's able to keep you from falling into a pit. He's able to present you faultless. Jude 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. I'm going to read that again. God can gird you, and this is in the God words version. God can gird you so that you don't fall and so that you can be full of joy as you stand in his glorious presence without fault. We are without fault. He is not behold iniquity. He is not behold iniquity in Jacob. You know, I'm going to stay on course. You have got to keep your gaze straight. I want you to know the urgency of this. This is the time of lengthened steps. You have got to hear the voice of the Lord because everyone's stride needs to be lengthened right now. But it need to be girded up by the compass. It need to be directed by the compass that is the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit is the leader and guider. Only the Holy Spirit teaches you. But this is the time for lengthened step. We have to hasten our steps now. We have to lengthen our stride now. And those who are not lengthening their stride according to the compass of the Holy Spirit are going to fall into things they didn't have to suffer. There can be untimely deaths. There can be situations and deliverances and abundance and connections that's going to bring you out to make you abundantly able to not only take care of your house but to bless others because he doesn't give you money just to sit on. We are stewards of everything that he has, stewards over this earth, steward over this body because this body ain't ours. We have to use this in good stewardship banner. Stewards over the funds, all money is his. Not no okay the ministry to come in and then okay what I get at the job is mine. No, all of it's his. Good stewards of everything he's given, and I promise you good stewards will be multiplied. I want y'all to hear me, please. Lengthen your steps. The time is now to get your gaze straight. Lengthen your stride. Keep your eyes on him and hearken to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Move when he say move. Stop when he say stop. And you will be, you, it's going to be to the deliverance not only of your family, but to many others. I pray this word blessed you. 
I pray in the name of Jesus I delivered it to the capacity in which he gave me this day and that it is a blessing that you are edified by it in all things that um because it is to build you up it is to make you aware of things and that you are able to understand what the Lord is communicating through me at this time and what he's given me to give you because I believe it's key I don't believe it's key I know it's key it is very key. So I pray that you would take heed. Please allow the Holy Spirit. Those of you who are not speaking to him every day, he's a person. You need to say good morning, Holy Spirit. Right down to what you were, what you say, where you go. Start greeting him every morning. You better start now. Because if you're not hearing his voice now, when turmoil hits, you're not going to hear it then. Talk to him. He's a person. He's the one who is here in the earth with us right now. He is the one who girds and guides and, and directs our steps and teaches and leads and guides us into all truths and our appointments and our times, the season of the Lord, and our chance, the meetings and the happenings of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today. I pray that you will stay tuned for the message that are to follow. And I pray those of you who don't know the Lord, I do have a prayer of salvation on my channel. Please give your heart to him today. If you're a doctor, listen to that prayer and the scripture that it used therein until you get it in your heart and then you cry out and you've confessed that out of your heart. You believe in your heart unto salvation and you, you confess it. I mean, uh, believe it in your heart unto justification and you confess it unto salvation. And you just get that word in your heart and trust him. Time is short. No one will stand before him but you. Not your mother, not your brother, not your sister, none of your friends. You will, everyone will stand before him individually. And you have an opportunity today. Take it. Because no one is promised tomorrow. God bless you, beloved. And grace be with you all. Thank you for joining us today on Preach. Be a voice, not an echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.